All right, folks, it is one o'clock Friday afternoon and we're gonna jump on in and get started. Welcome to the final showdown of our May Madness Week of speedrun game demos here at GPB Education. If you missed our Wednesday and Thursday shows, you're in for a treat today for our grand finale Friday afternoon with the Georgia Council on Economic Education. We are thrilled to have our guest gamers here, Chris, the Cash Commander Cannon, and Michael, the Master <laughs> Raymer. <laughs> they are here and they're ready to rumble. So for those of you guys who want to join in or play along or follow them down the rabbit hole, we don't expect you can keep up with their pace because they are money masters here and I don't think any of us can keep up, but you're welcome to go to gpb.org slash LCB for lights, camera, budget, either during the show or after any time. But right now, hold on to your seats. I'm gonna count down from three and we're gonna introduce our two gamers Mike, Michael Raymer and Chris Can You ready, guys? Yep. Thumbs up. Good roll. All right. In three, two, one, take it away. All right. So uh, I'm going to share the, the game screen here. Um, can everybody uh, see the screen and the timer? Yes? No? Maybe? Mike, can you see the screen and the timer? Yep. All right, I'll, I'll take that that everybody else can too. I, I, I had to close the chat boxes and all that kind of stuff because it was blocking up uh, parts of my screen here. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Happy to be here. Um, this game is uh, called Lights, Camera, Budget, and it is a co-production between the Georgia Council on Economic Education and Georgia Public Broadcasting. It uh, came about uh, as a result of a connection from uh, the SunTrust Foundation I sort of wanted to know if who funded both us and GPB. I wanted to know if uh, there was anything we could do together. Uh, we sort of brainstormed, and uh, the short version of it is this is what uh, is what came out of that. So um, the game is essentially a personal finance game. It's a review of personal finance concepts, and the whole purpose of the game is you're trying to make enough money during the personal finance component so that you can pay to get a movie produced. And so that's what we'll be doing here in just a moment. Mike, what else would you add? How, how has this game been beneficial to the council or, or what else? Uh, I think you forgot to mention it's an award-winning game, right? I, I did forget to mention that, and despite the fact that it stared me in the face. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this has been great. It's been a, a, a great way for us to reach a lot of students and a lot of teachers, uh, you know, online. And um, it's been very successful. Um, Chris, you know the numbers better than I do, but it's been one of the more popular games at GPB, right? Yes, uh, and I haven't looked at them recently, but at one point we had as many as uh, 2 million page views uh, on this, uh, which is pretty outstanding. And the, the number I think we're most happy about that we quote the most often is time on site. So for teachers, your students uh, on this, the average time on site, I believe is still north of 13 minutes, which is pretty crazy for an online game, um, especially with the attention spans of, of some of the kids. Um, so. Uh, once students get into this, they like to finish it because they want to see what their movie poster is going to look like. Um, so with that said, uh, we're going to jump in and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about how the game works and we'll talk about some of the rationale behind why we designed it the way we did. And then uh, after we play through a little bit of it, I'll start the game over and we'll do the actual speed run and we'll go through it uh, as fast as we can. All right. So uh, gpb.org slash LCB is where you want to go, gpb.org slash LCB. That'll take you to this page you see here. Uh, at the top, you'll see you got options for, there's a teacher's page that tells you about the game. You can actually play the game, so on and so forth. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in and play now. As Mike mentioned, uh, the game has won a couple of awards, in particular, uh, an award from the National Association of Economic Educators, the Gold Award. Um, and we're real proud of that one because those are our colleagues. Those are people who teach economics all over the country. And they took a look at the game and, and thought it was worth a uh, gold status. And then we won a silver award from a national organization called Serious Play. And uh, Serious Play uh, evaluates somewhere in the neighborhood of like 1,500 games a year. So they know what good online games look like. And we were able to win a silver award from them. Um, so I actually have got to start this one over because I was practicing earlier. So <laughs> when you start the game, this is what you'll see. Uh, and one thing I don't know if you notice when it uh, loaded there. You saw the numbers kind of uh, spin around and the game was kind of like loading. Uh, one thing that's really cool about this game is it preloads the entire game at all at the front end. So you don't have to worry about playing halfway through and then it like freezing up or something like that. 
Um, the trade-off to that is sometimes in some of the workshops I've been in and some of the schools that play this, that initial load takes a few minutes, but once you're here, you're good to go. You can play the middle school version or the high school version. The only difference is the level of questions and how the questions are coded. So in middle school, there is no coding. Every, all the questions are, they're all mixed in together. In high school, they're divided into insurance, um, budgeting, uh, choices, banking, and investing, I think were the five categories. Um, so you have some introductory screens here. It's just telling you that you're, you know, what your task is going to be and you're gonna have to make a movie. Really what the whole uh, concept of the video game is all about is making choices. And we wanted something that melded personal finance in with choice making. So in the teacher guide, there's a lot more about how to teach this. There's a lesson plan um, that involves this choice board. Uh, I'm sorry, not choice board. I've been hanging on my kindergartner too long. Um, this rational decision making board here. And uh, since this isn't a full on workshop on the game, I won't go into detail here, but uh, ultimately it's about cost benefit analysis. Um, it's not always the wisest decision to go with the cheapest things throughout the game and you can't always afford the most expensive. So balancing those two things out uh, is important. Um, when you get to this page, uh, you, are, you have to pick a mentor. And the idea behind the mentor is you know a lot about personal finance, but you don't know anything about making movies. So this person is supposed to help you along the way sort of make decisions. Uh, at one point in the game development, they had a lot more role in the game. Now they're sort of just there as like a side character. But you can pick whether you want a comedy, a horror, or an action movie. Mike, what are you feeling? Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, why, why focus on movies, Chris? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to get to that on the, the next part. But okay. the reason this whole thing came up uh, at all is because of the, the way the movie industry has exploded in Georgia. So uh, you, you probably heard, if you haven't heard that the movie industry is a big deal in Georgia, you're probably you know, living in a closet or something somewhere. Um, the, uh, the numbers bounce around a little bit, but direct spending uh, last year was well over $2 billion. There's uh, a lot of data out there that says that turns into somewhere around a seven to nine billion, billion with a B, dollar economic impact once it multiplies out, right? Like once you, you know, rent all the hotel rooms and then you pay for all the catering and all that kind of stuff. So we really wanted to tap into that. Uh, the industry doesn't appear to be going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, they've weathered a couple of storms recently that maybe threatened uh, their, their status here, but they're, they're pretty much here to stay from what we can tell. And we wanted students to sort of tap into that and uh, understand, uh, understand that the industry is here and the economic impact that it has. All right. You feel any particular kind of movie? Oh. Horror, comedy, oh, uh, action. Let's go comedy. We need some, we need some laughs these days. Yeah. All right. So we're going to pick her. Once you do that, you get three options uh, for your titles. Um, and depending on the option you choose here, this will determine what your movie poster looks like at the end. Uh, if you, if you make it that far. So uh, we'll pick, uh, we'll pick Remember the Kittens. We're not going to actually see the movie poster on this one anyway, because I'm going to stop it before we get to the end. And you're off and running at that point. So uh, we'll let everybody kind of play along here a little bit. Uh, assume these answer choices are labeled A, B, C, and D. Um, if you want to just throw in the chat box your, your, your answer here, we'll look at some of these questions. Um, so this is uh, an insurance question. Um, insurance is not specifically in the middle school standards, but we thought some of these simpler questions might still be worthy of a, a seventh, eighth grader's time. So why would someone purchase life insurance? To cover medical bills incurred from a life-saving surgery, to have money available for purchase later in life, to provide financial support for a person's family when that person dies, or D, to cover the cost of having a baby. Throw your answer in the chat box there and let's see what we got. C. A lot of answers coming in. A lot of people putting C for an answer. Okay. So far. That's good. Yep. Well, we'll see if it's good. That's right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick C since that's uh, what uh, people want me to choose there and you are correct. All right, so when that happens, Two things you want to take note of. One is at the very top of the screen up here. I'm moving my mouse around it. I hope, uh, I know it lags a little bit, but hopefully you're seeing it by now. Uh, you'll see the green line inside the pig. We're trying to fill that pig up. That lets us know two things. One, uh, how much money that we're earning towards our, our movie. Oh, and you might notice we started with $100 million. Okay, so we're making a big, pretty big budget movie. 
Um, and the other thing this will tell us is uh, how far along in the process we are. So you'll see we have three pigs to fill up. So we have just started the game. So the game basically functions in three segments, which is cool because it bounces back and forth. You get a little bit of feedback here. You get the same feedback whether you get the question right or wrong. Um, so people do usually buy life insurance to help cover things like funeral costs. All right, let's try another one. Which is not a skill that typically helps someone be successful in the workplace? A for teamwork, B for creativity, C for communication, or D for tardiness? The people are speaking and they're saying D. <laughs> D tardiness doesn't help you? Nope. <laughs> All right, uh, so we'll pick D and we are correct. So what is happening is we're answering these questions. You don't see it yet, but every correct question is giving us an additional $2 million. And somewhere early on in some of the stuff I skipped, it tells you that. It also tells you that, um, uh, it also tells you in the teacher guide uh, that that's the case. So you'd wanna tell the students that in advance. Uh, here we go, a new question on credit. Which type of purchase is most often made with credit? Most often, buying stocks or bonds, uh, large purchases like a house or a car, small purchases like candy at a gas station, or donations to a church. And you might interpret this as a which should be made with, with credit. What we got? Throw your answers in the chat box there. See a couple of Bs. Got a message from Leah saying, fill that bank. <laughs> All right, we're working on it. It's like the, the people are voting with B. Going with B. Let's go with B. All right, yes, large purchases. All right, so you get the idea. Uh, I'm gonna speed up here just a little bit. I think you see how the game is played. There are three rounds of this, and when I do the speed run here in just a minute, you'll see all three rounds. All right, so which of these does a person have the most control over in their lifetime? I know these questions really well, so I can go through them pretty quickly. We got a question here on financial institutions. How do they earn money? And they charge more interest than they pay, of course. And boom, just like that, we have made it through the first round. Our piggy bank is full, and we get an extra $10 million in bonus cash to spend on our movie. So now we have $110 million starting budget. So what do we use that money for, Mike? Well, you gotta pick a location, right? Absolutely. And, and now we get to uh, start making some decisions about our movie. Now remember we're making a comedy movie um, and uh, in order to get this movie produced, we gotta make some decisions. And that's where the decision-making model comes in and uh, the decisions come four at a time. So there are 12 total decisions, one for each of the three rounds. Uh, there's a pre-production, a production, and a post-production. The numbers that you see in the game are relatively accurate. I had them vetted through a few people in the film industry here in Georgia. Um, we had to fudge some of them for gaming reasons, obviously, uh, to make the numbers do what we wanted them to do. But for the most part, they're relatively uh, accurate. Um, so, uh, in the real version, when you're actually playing the game, not what I'm about to do, but when you're actually playing the game, the whole point of this is for the students to read the benefit. Oh, I'm sorry, I clicked on location first, in case you missed that. So the whole point is for the students to read the benefits and the negatives, or the costs and benefits, or whatever, of uh, each of your choices here, and then choose the one they think is best for their movie. So for example, if we want to film in Georgia, there's a lot of benefits. Uh, we have a very significant tax credit, uh, all sorts of scenery. We've got everything from mountains to coast to Spanish style houses to European style houses to whatever. Uh, we've got a major airport, which is important. Some really good infrastructure, our highways, our, uh, we've got a deep water port, which isn't necessarily huge to the film industry, but we have things like that. And uh, we have a trained crew base, and this is really important if you've been to any of our lights, camera, budget workshops. Um, we spend a lot of time on that. The fact that we have people here who can work on movies. Bad things about Georgia, we're really busy. So sound stages are booked up a lot. So if you're trying to get your movie made quickly, Georgia may not be the place for you unless you're looking to spend a lot of money to, to rent out somebody else's space, which happens. Um, resources related to the industry are already stretched pretty thin. This is changing as the industry stays here longer. We're building more infrastructure, but right now things like camera rentals, script writers, things like that, pretty high in demand. And then uh, we don't have a lot of the, what they refer to in the industry as above the line stuff. So we don't have a lot of script writers. We don't have a lot of uh, writing rooms and stuff like that. So that's a negative. So where else could you film? We well, could film in New York City. 
Uh, they have a lot of benefits as well. They've been filming stuff for a, a long time. They also have a significant infrastructure. Um, they also issue a tax credit, but it's not quite as good as Georgia's. Your negatives, was well, very expensive. Um, so for every dollar you spend in Georgia, you're gonna spend about a dollar uh, 20 to a dollar 50 in New York. Um, when you're talking about millions, that adds up pretty quickly. Uh, studios are hard to book, there's, and there's a lot of regulations. You could film in Arizona. Uh, Arizona has great weather. Uh, fantastic outdoor scenery. They're very close to LA, so you can get back and forth to LA pretty rapidly. Uh, however, it's um, they don't have a tax credit like we do, so not a lot of things go there. So therefore, you don't have a lot of uh, options in terms of crew and stuff like that. So it's cheaper. You could also go to Toronto. Toronto uh, is is pretty much identical to Georgia, I believe it or not, in terms of their tax credit and infrastructure and crew and, and things like that. All right, you might see some of my supporters uh, in the background there. All right, so anyway, there we go, woohoo, go, go down. This is how this works. Um, I'm gonna pick Georgia. Oh, I should have let you decide. I'll let you decide the next one. So we're gonna do the same thing on actor. Let's go through this a little quicker here. We have four actors we could choose from. We have Wayne the Stone Johnston. Just celebrated a birthday last week. Wayne did, you know, yep. you know Wayne. Uh, he's young, charismatic. Uh, he's, he might be overexposed a little bit. He's never won any major awards. He might be typecast. Uh, you could pick Dominique St. Catherine. She's a little cheaper. Uh, she's been starring in major motion pictures since the 1980s. Um, most people 30 or older know her. Uh, however, you know, uh, age limit may, or her age may limit the type of role she can play. She hasn't carried a major motion picture in, in some time. We could pick Param Patel. Uh, he would be the cheapest option. Um, he's been in independent films, uh, but he just signed a deal to a major cable series. Um, that will cause several conflicts uh, with our, might cause several conflicts. Uh, sorry, all right, I muted myself. Okay, and uh, last one is Deanna Owl, Jason, a former musician for a very popular rock band. All right, so we have Deanna, uh, Wayne Stone Johnson, Dominique St. Catherine, or Pram Patel. Throw in the chat box who you want me to, to pick. All right, we'll see what we get here. So far, Wayne is in the lead. Wayne the Stone, he's he's the, getting the votes right now. Although we do see someone wanting Patel. Wayne, let's go with Wayne. I think Wayne's uh Wayne it is. Well, it's Wayne and Patel was in second, but Wayne and his massive uh, salary, we're picking him. <laughs> All right. All right, so everybody watch at the top here. Uh, you'll see our movie budget is $80 million. All right, when I click uh, Wayne, we're going to lose that $20 million just like that. Poof, it's gone. Yeah, we started, um, started at 100 million, right? We started at 100, and then we made it through now. answering the questions correctly. Uh, so now we're down to 60. Okay, so a couple of things here that are going on behind the scenes that you can't see, and this is up to you whether or not you want to tell the students this. Uh, the you you'd be guaranteed to get a five star movie at the end of this if you pick the most expensive option all the way through. All right. However, the only way that's possible is if you answer every single personal finance question correctly. You can't miss a single one. Uh, so there are other options to get the five star too. And behind each choice, sort of in the, the math of the, the game, behind the scenes, um, each choice comes with a ranking. And some choices are good for your movie and some choices are not so good for your movie. If you go through the whole game and pick all the cheapest stuff, well then you'll have a fairly low budget movie. You'll have a lot of money left over, which you were supposed to use for your movie. And uh, you won't get as good of a score. So that's the, the goal here. The goal here is to get as many of the high quality items as you can. And uh, the only way you can do that is by answering questions correctly. Um, so that's how this works. This is uh, around, I'll just uh, uh, I'll go ahead and throw in Letitia there as our supporting actor. Our directors, we could pick uh, Gretchen Gruing, Steven Seabird, Quinn Westwood, and uh, Alicia, mm, I don't know, Duvernay? I don't know. I don't even know who she's, uh, she's based on there. Most of these people, as I'm sure you can tell, are based on real-ish people, but I don't know about Alicia. And that's how this works. All right, do I have any questions before we do the, the run through? Nothing coming up yet. I think give the people what they want. <laughs> All right, so uh, again, you've got middle and high school versions of this. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run through the game as quick as possible. 
uh, when Tracy first asked us to do this, Tracy from Georgia Public Broadcasting first asked us to do this, she called it a speed run. And I'm, I'm not like a hardcore gamer, but I'm enough of a gamer to know what that means. And that is you are supposed to try to go through as fast as you can and get a, a perfect score. So I'm gonna set a timer. Hopefully you can see the timer over here. Uh, and Mike will sort of narrate some of the things I'm gonna do. Uh, you're probably not gonna see a lot of the questions. I know these questions real well and uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. All right, feel free to throw things in the chat box as we go. Let me make sure I've got everything set on my end over here. How do you know the questions so well? <laughs> I know the guy who wrote most of them. All right. <laughs> He's near and dear to my heart. Better not get any wrong. <laughs> oh, I might, I do it in workshops sometimes. Some of these questions are tricky. All right, here we go. All right, and I'm gonna start the timer and boom, we're off and running. It's off. It's going middle, middle school. Oh, that is fast. It's like he's making Catlanta. So this one we just saw. That's, that's one I miss sometimes. Just on your interest. Most people income is not easy to get. That's because you're working scarce. Uh, that pig is filling up, Chris. What was that? That pig is filling up. That's good. That's what I want. Uh, so, all right. Someone with limited income. Oh, good. they can still save money for a short-term goal. All right. All right. Uh, so uh, we got our $10 million. We're in good shape to get all of our money. Uh, I'll tell you a, a cheat, or not really a cheat, but a secret of the game is your best choice is always the first one. If you're trying to go through it quickly like this. That was not by design, it just sort of worked out that way. All right, now, oh, I didn't talk about surprise events. Surprise events happen at the end of each round. Uh, if you answer a lot of questions right, you get a good one. If you answer them poorly, you get a bad one. So I got a good one there. All right, we got least risky, oh, this one I have to be careful with too. So let's see, savings accounts, there you, here we go. Uh, best way for a person to increase their ability to earn income, just get more education, right, Mike? Yep. Of course, I don't want to throw you off, but if a student's missing all of the questions, will they even be able to make them? Oh, that's, no, you will get booted out. If you miss all the questions, you will not have enough money to finish uh, the game. Uh, and I should have showed you that. I should have done that with the last one. And then they just start over, right? That's correct. Yeah, you have to start over. Uh, not a benefit of saving money. You cannot predict prices, even if you save money. People typically earn income by providing goods and services to others. That's an elementary school Another question. Check. This is good. Another bonus, 10 million. Woo All right, so now you're making different kinds of choices. We got crew, equipment, hospitality, and- I Take catering. care of our folks. By the way, that $2 million there uh, on catering, that's, uh, that's actually a fairly legit number. I know that seems sky high, but it's- uh, These are a lot of the things you probably don't think about when you think about movies being produced. That's correct. They're all expensive. All right, we got an extra 20 million, so we are in good shape here. Uh, the cost of credit is interest rates. Teach your kids that, please. Uh, the fin oh, financial institutions are loving on that one, which is not a skill. We, we talked about that. We don't want to be tardy. You'll see some of the same questions come up in the middle school. There's like 30, I'm sorry, there's like 55-ish questions, I think. I uh, hope to have more by the fall, or we will have more by the fall. I've been working on that sort of slowly. This one I have to be careful with because there's three different versions of this question. Nope. So the most important thing for Franco is to stay out of debt then he should not go on the trip and save some money. Chris, we're coming up in three minutes. Oh, I'm going faster than yesterday. Yep. Assume you take $100 out of your month and you put it in a mutual fund, you are both saving and investing. Uh, $10 million bonus. Last thing, we're post-production. I'll do marketing last because, go ahead. Two minutes for pre-production and one minute for production, Chris. So awesome splits there. <laughs> yeah. All right, one thing quick on uh, marketing here. I know I'm supposed to be going fast, but I do want to point this out. Um, this is sort of a, a hidden uh, landmine in the game. Uh, if they make it to the last round, but they're barely skating by, they won't be able to spend $30 million marketing your movie. And if you don't market your movie, guess what happens to your movie? Doesn't work. Uh, people don't make it. Yeah, so it drops off pretty steep. It goes from 30 to 15, but that also makes, it takes you down from a five to a four. Um, so I played, I played around this morning, Chris, and I did not, I didn't get the, the, the high end here and I did not get a five star. There you go. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so you got to be able to market. If you, do, you don't market, yeah. people aren't going to come. All right. So uh, here we go. Uh, we wrapped up. We're going to see how our movie performed. There's our movie poster. Here come our stars. 
And I'm gonna say stop right there because that's the end of the game right there. Four four minutes and five seconds. And that was with me talking a little bit. And we have six million dollars left over. So there you go. You can give everybody bonuses now. That's right. Yeah. Can I just um, say, wow, that was amazing, guys. I don't know if anyone can beat that world record. That was four minutes. I think Chris gets a four-minute mark on that for making an entire five-star movie from pre-production to post-production. <laughs> but the, so a couple of things about the, the game is a lot of fun. Students really like it, particularly if they don't make it to the end, if they get into that third piggy bank and they run out of money, they want to play again. We see that come through in the numbers, um, and we get that uh, from feedback um, as well. Uh, so again, the, the website is gpb.org slash LCB. Um, in the fall, we'll start back up a, uh, a competition where if your students can do what I just did and get a full piggy bank and a five-star movie, then their name gets entered into a contest and we send them a, a t-shirt and gift card, I think, yep. something like that. Yeah. We had two winners uh, in the spring, right? Yes, uh, so, we had a, so we do a middle school and a high school um, winner. Yeah, correct, and the teacher gets a... Uh, gets a gift card as well. Well, I like right, yeah. There's a lot of things I like about it, but um, I think it's, it's clever. I think the kids will enjoy um, the different characters. And obviously the most important thing is that they're learning, you know, they're you know, going over um, personal finance uh, questions that I think are very relevant to all of them. Um, and ultimately it's, you, you can win something for kids. I think that's great. That's what they want to do. And for a teacher, it's self-paced. Um, you know, the kids can take as, as little or as long as uh, amount of time they need in the classroom. And I think that's kind of neat. They finish early, they can play again, make another movie, you know, tell them to use another category of movie, make a horror movie next, something like that. Um, so potentially uh, there's a lot for kids to do within this game. And that's what I like about it. Yep, uh, I, I turned on the high school version just to show you one uh, nuance difference. Most uh, students will never uh, pick up on, but down here at the bottom in the high school version, um, there are icons instead of numbers. I don't know if you noticed in the middle school version, there were numbers, question one, two, three, four, five. The high school, um, we wanted to be conscientious that we were definitely hitting all the standards from the personal finance section, at least all the ones we could. Um, so those uh, pictures down there indicate where your questions are gonna come from. So the first one's credit, second one's banking, third one's um, budgeting, fourth one's insurance, and fifth one's investing. So uh, you'll see as I go through, you, you get one of those every time. In the middle school, it's possible you could get four budgeting questions in a row. In the high school, that's impossible. Chris, got a question from the chat box from yep. Kim Harrison. She writes, I teach the gifted and talented program in an elementary school and was considering this game for my fifth graders. Thoughts? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, right. I mean, other, I mean that some of the words they won't know, but I mean, that's, that's fine. They can look them up, yeah. We uh, targeted middle and high school conscientiously for standards purposes, um, but yeah. Okay, and then uh, next question from uh, Michael. Uh, in your workshop, do you talk about the instructional strategies surrounding, for instance, just talking about the connection between infrastructure and attractiveness to the industry is a great lesson for kids? Yes, absolutely. So um, we, we use this in a couple of different workshops, or, well, we promote it wherever we go, obviously, um, as I know you guys do too, Mike and Tracy, but, uh, but in specifically in the lights camera, it's actually called lights camera economics, the workshop is. Um, we spend a lot of time on the game, yeah, talking about decision making, but then also exactly what you just pointed out, the fact that uh, this game exists because of the film industry being here, why is the film industry here? Yeah, we spend a lot more time on the details of what's so great about Georgia. Um, I show a great video clip from Lee Thomas um, who talks about that. And then we do a couple of lessons about uh, you know, why is it important to have people who can run cameras and grip and stuff like that. Uh, why do you need highways? Why is it important that we have a huge hotel industry here in the state? You know, why all those things matter um, and add up. Yeah. All right, how do teachers find out about the competition where students can win prizes from us? Um, normally through the workshop or through email or the okay. two way or following us on Twitter. Um, so at Georgia econ on Twitter, um, I'm pretty sure GPB pushes that out too. So follow both of us on Twitter. Okay. Um, so that will come out in October, October's. All right. And the students, uh, basically get a, a screenshot of the, the, the filled pigs yes. in, uh, in the, the, the five-star movie, right? 
Yep, so when you get to the end, uh, you take that screen capture. It's got to have all three piggy banks full and um, a five-star movie. And I had a teacher ask us on this last go-round, um, what if they play it multiple times? I was like, that's the whole point. <laughs> yes, I them play it multiple times. The high school test bank has, I don't know, 60, or no, 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 more than that. It's got like 80-something questions in it. So they'd have to play through a lot to see all the questions. And it's gonna have more in the fall. Chris, do you wanna show the teacher, like there's a teacher guide, right? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Early on. Do you wanna pull up and show it to him? Yep. GPB.org slash LC. See, it's saved in my computer because I go here all the time. And then you while you're looking at that, a um, question came in. Have you found that any particular genre or movie is more popular? Just curious. Ooh, uh, no, I don't know the top of my head. Yeah, I, mean, I mentioned we could look, could we, we can. trace that? Yeah, we can, we, can, uh, we can get that off the Google, um, we call it analytics. Uh, and then next one, hold on, next another okay. question. Uh, elementary STEM teacher writes, uh, considering this for upper elementary and small groups as a free choice activity to practice critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity, perhaps there will be an elementary version sometime with a commercial budget? Hmm, commercial, like, like TV commercials? Uh, we'll see if they, they answer back. Yes. Uh, could be. I will say this was not a, a, a cheap endeavor. <laughs> so to build another one of these, uh, but I, I, wouldn't, I won't say it'll never happen. Uh, I could definitely see us turning this into some sort of elementary version. Okay. Um, um, another it's question not far from it as is, to be honest. I mean, we really just need better questions and maybe take out some of the horror movie. Posters. Okay. Another comment question uh, from Kim. I can see this turning into a fantastic project-based learning opportunity where students, student groups produce their own movie. Any community partners you could recommend to reach out to for this purpose? Hmm. I, I could think of some perhaps. Where are you? Does, does Kim say where she's located? Uh, you, not there's, a, there's an organization um, their name is escaping me right now, but uh, if, um, shoot. Uh, anyway, yes, there's an organization that might be willing to send, they send speakers to some of our workshops and all, they might be able to put you in touch with someone from the industry um, who, would be, who would be into doing that kind of thing. There's also people at Georgia State University. Um, so yeah, if you, uh, my email is on our um, website. Uh, if you email me, I could, I could help you out with that, I think. All right, she's from Clark Creek Elementary School, STEM Academy, uh, somewhere in Georgia. Yeah, yeah, if you email us, uh, for sure. Aqua. Georgia, there you go. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely people up there. Um, I could probably put you in touch with. Uh, the teacher page here um, pulls up uh, two things, a teacher guide you see there on the left, and um, it's just it's everything I said earlier, pretty much. And then uh, if you download this, a PDF file here. It, this you should not give to the students because it gives a lot of the secrets away of the game, but um, it also tells you uh, kind of the t teaching points, the critical teaching points. It's got alignment to the standards there and, and also national standards as well if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of teacher tips, a lot of gameplay. I mean, really, it's, it's a soup to nuts uh, overview of the game. We didn't see any of these thankfully, <laughs> but there are negative surprise events that make you lose money. And uh, yes, if you do run out of money, that's it. You don't get to make your movie. You got to start all the way over, um, which is good because then you'll get to see the questions again. And then here on page nine starts sort of the, the lesson plan and uh, what we hope you'll, what we hope the students will get out of it and learning the decision-making model. And then, um, yeah, and then it breaks it down how you use it in the game. And there's actually a handout you could hand to the students there on page. All right, Chris, question, well, from, the question from John. He asks, where does it explain the five-star rating goal? Uh, that is in, let's see, uh, gameplay. I think it's in somewhere in gameplay mechanics and teacher tips. Let's start in five. Uh, the right. Uh, well, the game is, oh, here, the, the best star rating movie is a five stars and lowest is one star. The star rating is directly correlated with the movie alternative choices. Uh, where it tells the student that, where does it tell the student? Somewhere. 
It's in the like, very beginning, right? Doesn't it say? Uh, that's, uh, well, we're going to find out. That's a good question. I, like, you know, I, I should know that off the top of my head, but I don't. Um, new producer, you'll learn how to do that. We need to make choices. Huh, I guess it did. That's something we could add when we do our, our upgrade to this. Yeah, because then they just start. Uh, oh, it might be something the, uh, hold on, let me see what happens when we choose one of these three advisors. What kind of move you want to make? Catalina. Yeah, yeah, they never really say you're trying to get a five-star. So thanks, John. That's a, that's a good point. We can put that in there quite easily when we do a, our fall update. It's in the teacher guide. All right, I don't see any more questions coming in. Tracy, was there anything else you wanted me to touch on or go over? No, that was great. Um, like I said, it was a wonderful grand finale for the week. I don't think that world record is going to be beat for a long time, but you guys are welcome to go to gpb.org slash LCB and try to make a five-star movie in less than four minutes. It can be done. Um, I, I went slow there at the end. That's true. So you think so you're saying you're challenging yourself to do it in three minutes? I'm challenging myself, seconds. yeah. Is that right? I think three three twenty is the new goal. <laughs> Ooh, three twenty. All right, guys. So you heard it from the cash commander himself. Challenge is three minutes and twenty seconds. A couple comments um, just coming in. Uh, Kim Harrison again. She says, uh, love this, thank you. Ideas are already brewing. Great to hear. And Leah Wetzler says, students love it. She's used it with students already and uh, she's endorsing it. Wonderful. So for all of you who participated, just wanted to let you know, we are going to send you a copy of the recording so you can watch uh, the Masters in Action over and over again if you would like. Uh, we're also going to send you a little bit from the, uh, tra the chat transcript. There are some questions and some answers out there that are pretty useful, so we'll send you a transcript. And it will be on our PD online PD page, so uh, if you need that recording or want to share it with uh, your friends, you can go to our online PD page at GPB and find the recording as well. We have about 40 webinars from these pa this past month that have been recorded and are there. Anything else you guys want to say before we thank everyone for joining us and let them go on their weekend way? I want to thank you at GPB for all your, your help and partnering Absolutely. with us for such a great project. We should, we should also acknowledge that GPB uh, education was our winner this year of uh, the Van Landingham Commitment to Economic or to Commitment to Education Award, um, which is a pretty uh, big award we give every year. So uh, we're happy to be partnering with you guys and congrats on that award. Thank you. Too bad we couldn't give it to you in person. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good uh, consolation prize. <laughs> I have it right here if you want it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's actually at the office. I forgot that. There you go. Yes, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank nice. you. Thank you. Thank you. And shout, shout out to Fable Vision Studios for the beautiful oh, artwork as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, yeah. So this is our third game, all Fable Vision. Really well done. All right, guys. So we are going to let you go on your way. Um, have a wonderful weekend and hope to see you again next week for more live webinars. I know the Georgia Council is also doing live webinars. So keep following us on Twitter and Facebook. Let us know how we could support you and have a wonderful weekend. See you later. Thanks. Thank you.